Welcome to English in a Minute. When it rains heavily, we often say it is pouring. When it rains, it pours. I think something is going around the office this week. You mean like the flu? No, not the flu. I mean bad luck. Maria's bike was stolen. Jack broke his arm. Doug lost $300. That is a lot of bad stuff happening. When it rains, it pours. When it rains, it's never just one raindrop. Many raindrops fall. So this idiom means that when something bad happens, other bad things usually happen too. You can also say when it rains, it pours if a lot of good things are happening to you. But more often than not, it's about bad things. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. We blink our eyes like this. In the blink of an eye. I have no idea what Anna and Jonathan are about to do. Really? Oh man, that sounds fun. Jonathan, can you help me out? Sure, Anna. I'm almost done here. What time does it start? Jonathan, I need help now. This stuff is really heavy. Sure, Anna. I will be there in the blink of an eye. Eight? Eight sounds great. I don't think you know what that means. <laughs> Humans blink up to 20 times a minute. And each blink happens quickly. So when we say something happens in the blink of an eye, we mean it happens fast. Which is the opposite of what Jonathan did. He took his sweet time. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. A hook and a crook were both farming instruments used a long time ago. By hook or by crook? What are you reading, Anna? This is a travel book on Antarctica. That's a cold, cold place. Are you planning on going? Yes. It won't be easy, but I will definitely find a way to go by hook or by crook. Today, by hook or by crook means to try to get something by using any means possible, either good or bad. Hundreds of years ago, villagers were allowed to collect natural resources from private wooded areas. But they could only take as much as their farm tools, like hooks and crooks, could gather. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. A day job is a person's usual work, what they do every weekday to earn money. Don't give up your day job. So guess what? I remembered Sue's birthday and I made her a gift all by myself. Wow, Jonathan. What is it? it it's a homemade hat. Nice work. But please, don't give up your day job. I'm not sure hat making is your thing. Telling someone, don't give up your day job, is another way of saying you are not very good at something. Anna saw Jonathan's homemade hat and knew he could not earn a living as a professional hat maker. It is said jokingly, but can be considered rude. So be careful when using this expression. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. This is a goose. Wild goose chase. Oh boy. Why are Anna and Jonathan chasing waterfowl? Hey, how was your weekend? Well, I spent it with my friends who are trying to find the perfect spot for their wedding. That sounds fun. Or maybe not. It was a wild goose chase. He wants a big place. She wants a small place. He wants city, she wants country. So, did they find a place? No. In fact, they decided to wait. A wild goose chase is a search for the impossible. The expression comes from Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet. Back then, it described a kind of horse race. But these days, it just means a hopeless and frustrating search. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. 
grapes can be used to make wine. Sour grapes. Sour grapes, though, do not sound so tasty. Did your buddy Craig ask my friend Morgan out for a second date yet? Well, he did, and she turned him down. But Craig told me he wasn't that interested in her anyway. Sounds like sour grapes to me. Probably right. This phrase comes from the ancient Greek storyteller Aesop. A fox tries to eat some grapes from a vine, but they are too high for the fox to reach. So the fox claims the grapes are probably sour anyway. When someone has a case of sour grapes, they criticize something desirable that they know they cannot have, just like Craig did after Morgan turned him down. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. To twist something means to bend or turn it into a shape that is not normal or natural. Twist someone's arm. This just sounds painful. And what happened to you? You look really tired. Yeah, I was out late at the Moldy Earlobes concert. I thought you said you weren't going because of your big presentation this morning. Correct, but our dear friend Ashley twisted my arm. She even said she'd buy me pizza before the show. Twisting someone's arm in the sport of wrestling is a way to gain control. In a way, that is what this expression means. To twist someone's arm means to force someone to do something. But it was pretty easy to get Jonathan to go to the show. It only took one word, pizza. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. When you run in a race, it is definitely a good thing to be at the front. Front runner. So I am guessing Jonathan and Anna are racing each other. Those two are so competitive. So I saw White Coast Blue Sea last night. Finally, pretty great, huh? <sighs> well, I'm not sure I understand why people are saying it's the front runner for best picture at the Oscars. What? Are you serious? I, 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 I just can't talk to you right now. A front runner is the person or thing that is most likely to win a competition. You can use this expression to talk about a sports team, a political candidate, or yes, a movie nominated for an award. And that's English in a Minute. Welcome to English in a Minute. It is good to arrive to important events on time or even early. I was worried you were not going to make it. Oh, well, I'm here, I'm here, and I have all the things you asked me to bring. Great, you got here just in the nick of time. We only have five minutes before the guest of honor arrives. And that is? My cat and all her furry friends. Your cat? Yeah. If something happens in the nick of time, it happens at the last possible moment just before it is too late. Nick was the word for a narrow and exact marker. Word experts say the phrase in the Nick has been used for hundreds of years to mean a critical moment.